Let's give the Lord Jesus a wonderful round of applause. My friends, we're going to have wonderful service. If you have a cell phone, please turn it off so it won't disrupt the message and let us do the God's work. I always like to explain it like this. Perhaps I'm causing some damage against my own life, apparently, by saying I'm not a healer or a miracle worker, but I have to speak the truth. I'm not. There's only one who heals, and that's the Lord God. So if there is someone following me, thinking I may be able to help. I'm going to feel like the worst human being because I won't be able to help. Jesus is the one who helps. Of course, as a preacher, I'll pray for you and minister the blessing. Now I'm going to tell you a secret. The power you actually need is dispensed by the Lord God when he opens up his mouth, in other words, in the revelation of the word. When you do understand what the Lord God is saying, then you are truly enabled to take hold of the blessing. The Lord is going to work here today. And I believe that he is able to work in your life. It is not possible for Jesus to deny that which he has promised, because he himself said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means at all pass away. Therefore, let us believe. You who are at home, let us all believe. When it's time for us to say the prayer of faith, release your faith. Let us all expect great manifestations of the Lord, and we will leave here today with the blessing in the name of the Lord Jesus. Let us watch the video of someone who is blessed, and this is going to help you stir up your faith. It helps my faith as well. Roll it, shall you? Louisa, what used to be your problem? I, 25 years ago, I was riding a bicycle that had no brakes and I fell from it. And until today, it hurt a lot and I couldn't rotate my arm. Sometimes it hurt, I would feel a sharp pain here. And Louisa, what are you able to do now? I couldn't rotate my arm, but now I can rotate it. Look at this, folks. 25 years, Lisa. 25 years. Do you think it's a joke, folks? Our God is awesome. Glory to Lift God. Lift both arms to heaven now, Lucia. You couldn't do this. No. You can go now in the name of Jesus. And we're going to give Jesus a big hand, right, folks? My brothers, you can see what our faith is able to accomplish. For 25 years, she received treatment, but it didn't help. She had shell pains, and she couldn't rotate nor lift the arm. Jesus healed her. I don't know what your problem is. It might be physical, might be emotional, might be an inner problem deep down in your heart. You might be feeling frustrated, feeling anguished, feeling hurt, feeling downcast, feeling depressed. God has come here today to bless you. Write this down. He has worked in the past. He, he can work today and he will always work. The Bible tells us something very clearly. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. When he was here on earth, he used methods that we ourselves would probably never use to heal. Once there was a mute man, and Jesus spit on the man's tongue. He must have said, uh, stuck his tongue out. <laughs> or Jesus got some saliva and put it on the man's tongue. But spitting is spitting, right? And the man was healed. Other times Jesus made uh, mud. Um, he spit on the floor, made mud, and put it on the blind man's eyes. But what was that for? I don't know. An unusual work. I actually do have something to tell you about an unusual work. Let us open our Bibles in Isaiah 28. My friends, in Isaiah 28, understand verse 21. We have a promise from Jesus that we really need to understand. Because many times he wants to do something that is different in our lives. The passage says this, For the Lord will rise up as at Mount Perizim. He will be angry as in the valley of Gibeon, that he may do his work, his awesome work, and bring to pass his act, his unusual act. What does this mean? Over at Mount Perizim, that was when David became king and the Philistines came to attack him. David rose up and said, Lord, are you going to, to go with me? Yes. Then David went into the battle. Later, David said, look, I was acting like a war machine. I simply looked like a dam that suddenly burst. I went into the Philistines camp, killed everybody, and he came out unharmed. And in Gibeon, that was when uh, G Joshua prayed to the Lord, and the Lord stopped the sun, the stars, the moon, and almost for a whole extra day, the, uh, um, the, the time, the sun did not set. The whole universe stopped. Then during the battle, the Lord God sent hailstones from heaven over the enemies of the Israelites. 
We have to look at this from a spiritual standpoint. Whenever you're facing trials, say, Lord, I need one of your unusual acts, one of your awesome works, because he promised this here. So if we have a foundation in the Bible, we need to keep on praying and we need to keep on waiting for the Lord will rise up as at Mount Perizim. He will be angry as in the Valley of Gibeon. At Perizim, he turned David into a war machine. At Gibeon, he went into the battle and made the entire universe stop that he may do his work, and he says, his awesome work. Don't expect a recurrence of something that's already happened to you before, but expect a great manifestation of God's power. And bring to pass his act, his unusual act. And when God does want you to do this, whenever we ask, whenever we pray, whenever we call upon the mighty name of God, he goes into battle and gives us the victory. Let us all pray now in the name of Jesus. But you must believe right now, our guide, he is able to do an unusual work in your life. Father, we're praying to you now in the name of Jesus. At Perizim, you anointed David in such a way that he was not just a warrior anymore. He was like a war machine. He was invincible and he had a complete victory there at the Valley of Gibeon. Lord, you sent hailstones all the way from heaven over the enemies. You answered the prayers of Joshua and the whole solar system stopped. What you are going to do for this person now, only you know, but I rebuke this evil and I say to this evil force, that has been working in order to destroy this person's marriage. And today they are here and they're heartbroken. It's been working to destroy this person's health and they've come to believe there's no solution. Every demon come out in the name of Jesus Christ. And you say, Amen. One day I was coming into church and a lady said to me, Dr. Suarez, I want to say something to you. It's actually something ironical. I said, I don't understand. I'm a doctor, she said and the Lord has used you to heal me. I've already told this story here four or five times, this testimony, but since we have a lot of people, I think I'll tell it again. I asked, but what happened to you? I was at home, I lived alone, I was sleeping, and I woke up during the night. I had a problem in my gallbladder, and I was going to have it removed. It was filled with stones. One of my medical colleagues was, uh, was treating me, preparing me for the surgery. And I had watched you on television, and that night when I awoke, you came into my bedroom. I was in my nightgown. I said, my God, Dr. Suarez, what are you doing here? You were wearing a white suit and you said, I came to you to bless you. I said, but I've never been to your house. She said, of course you have not. It was just a dream. Then you told me this. Well, I'm going to pray for you for your gallbladder to be healed. You raised your hand and began to pray. When you started praying, this area began feeling warm. Then I lifted my nightgown and started looking at the gallbladder area right next to my ribs here. And I saw my flesh open up, all this in the dream. So I have a dressing table. When it opened, when my gallbladder opened, it was filled with stones. So I went and I picked up, all in the dream, right? A little pair of tweezers that I use when I pluck my eyebrows. And I started to pick out the, pick out the stones one by one. I said, my God, this is really strange. And so when I removed, removed the last one, sh it closed. Then I looked and you were gone. I thought, this is really strange. I pushed it, but it didn't hurt. It used to hurt before. Then I waited for, for a break of the day. At 8 o'clock, I called my medical colleague and said, I need to talk to you. There's been a phenomenon here. You have got to see me. Okay, come. At about 10, 11 in the morning, I went there, and he examined me, and he did an, he did an ultrasound. He's Dr. Suarez. He said, you don't have any gallbladder stones. And she said, well, that was sure was unusual. I said, yes, that's an awesome act of God. Sometimes we are, end up being so close-minded that all we want to do is what's familiar to us. But the Lord has something else in mind. He has something greater in mind. He has something a little different. And that's not going to do us any harm. And we should just say, Jesus, do this very unusual work. Do your special thing in my life. Do this unusual act. Do this different work. I, I get excited when I preach this message here because it's talking to me. If I need it, he'll be ready to do it. For the Lord will rise up as Mount Perizim. He will be angry as in the valley of Gibeon, that he may do his work, his awesome work. Isaiah repeats this and says, it's going to be awesome. Expect great things from God and bring to pass his act, his unusual act. And when God works, my dear brother, 
We have a 100% success guarantee. Our God is powerful. Speaking of powerful, let us watch another miracle now in the name of Jesus. Let's roll it, shall we? Before, my leg used to wobble a little, but now it's fine. I can walk now. Did it used now. to wobble? It was kind of limp, you know. It was weird. How did you used to walk with this leg? I used to walk kind of... Uh, when did you have the thrombosis? I had the thrombosis last year. Can you walk normally now? Yes, now Then I can walk. Then walk normally now in the name of Jesus. Look, she's even laughing now, folks. She's very happy now. <laughs> Let's give the Lord Jesus a round of applause, folks. Now, getting back here to this unusual work that the Lord God is doing, um, uh, he's doing it for us here. For the Lord will rise up. I don't need to make the Lord God rise up, neither do you. We need to be on the watch for when he touches us, when he opens up our understanding for something. If that has been promised in the word, then let us believe. Lord, I believe. And when we believe, we give the Lord permission to work. You don't have to tell the Lord God, I want you to do this. You just disclose the problem, then take your stand and let the Lord direct you. You'll often see that what you need is to take a stand in order for the Lord God to work. In other words, he's given you the word, he's opened your eyes. Just say, Lord, I believe this is going to happen. As at Mount Perizim, he will be angry as in the valley of Gibeon, that he may do his work, that's our point, his awesome work, and bring to pass his act, his unusual act, the usual things. He does this all the time. We're talking about special things that God wants to do for us. Speaking about the unusual acts of God, let us now go to Luke chapter 7. Here, the Lord Jesus is talking about John the Baptist. I'm not going to talk about what the Lord said about John the Baptist, but I'm going to talk about a fact that occurred that the Holy Writer explains here because of the word Jesus spoke about John the Baptist. Starting from verse 28, he began to say a lot. For I say to you, among those born of women, there is not a greater prophet than John the Baptist. But he who is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. Now look at what I want to show you here. And when all the people heard him, when they heard Jesus, even the tax collectors justified God. Having been baptized with the baptism of John, they made the right decision. Jesus was talking about John the Baptist, but what he actually said about John touched the hearts of those people who were there listening to Jesus talk and who had already heard John, and also of those who had those tax collectors who had been baptized by John. And so they, so they justified the Lord God. When you do this, understand something, something a brother has told you about Jesus Christ. And sometimes they speak without even knowing what they said, but that was a prophecy that has touched your entire heart. Justify the Lord's sake. Now I'm going to take hold of this prophecy. This word truly belongs to me. I'm going to take hold of it. I'm going to seek this blessing because it wasn't by accident this person said to me. Sometimes we even simply enjoy it. But it's like we were a little bit drowsy, a little bit inebriated. We're sort of dozing off. And we don't realize that the Lord God is giving us a blessing. The pastor preaches. We consecrate ourselves. We intercede before the Lord. It's an actual battle. We don't just get here, open the Bible, and start talking as if we were a record player. No, we have to keep praying. We have to be sensitive to God and deliver the message. The last service we had, at the last minute, I changed the message. It was supposed to be this one because I felt led of God to start teaching about determination and the Lord God blessed a lot of people. Same thing with you. You felt something? They heard Jesus talking about John and when all the people heard him, they heard Jesus talking. Even the tax collectors who were sinners, who collected taxes, justified God having been baptized with the baptism of John. Whatever God sends your way, you must take hold of it and justify it. And never let any feeling of anger, of hatred, of resentment, of sore, um, of, of malice penetrate your heart. On the contrary, God used that person during that testimony, during the real life drama, during the healing that took place after Dr. Swati's prayed. But that word spoke to me, justify the Lord. He didn't send you that word by accident. Take hold of it and he'll change things. Sometimes it's in the financial area, in our marriages. Pay attention to this. Let us continue. But the Pharisees, those who acted like choir boys and lawyers rejected the will of God for themselves, not having been baptized by him, they knew that John was a prophet of God. 
and they knew that John had been doing the will of the Lord God. But they were Pharisees. The Pharisees were a Jewish religious sect who thought that they were better than everybody else. Because of that, they did not want, um, they did not want to be baptized by John. And the experts in the law, those hot shots, according to the world, but who didn't understand anything at all, as they only had the dead letter but didn't have the revelation, they did not at all want to be baptized by John. They rejected the counsel of the Lord God. My dear brother, if the Lord touches your heart, that means you're supposed to do something. Maybe pray for someone or perhaps help someone. But Dr. Schwartz, I also have needs. But if the Lord has touched you, go ahead and do it. Don't give it a second thought. Do it in the name of Jesus. Even if the person says, you don't have to say, please, God has touched me and I'm doing it. And there might be a word that's, that's been burning in your heart and you send it to the person's email or by Skype or you give them a call. John, I can't understand this, but today is your birthday and I had been thinking about you and I felt this. You don't know what that might be able to produce. Don't reject the counsel of God or it might be something you received. You felt warned, say, I am going to pray. Behind these words, they said, there might be a diabolical plan that's going to cause me some harm, physical, financial, or moral harm to me or to my family, and I'm going to neutralize this work of the devil. You need to justify the Lord God. You cannot despise his counsel since the Lord is our Father, and he loves us. He wants what is best for us. Therefore, we need to be always watchful. When he speaks, thank you so much, Lord God. If he's inspired you to do something specific, to give a message, to change a person, my dear brother, this is something you'll have to immediately decide. I'm going to do this. Sometimes it might seem crazy. One day I was driving here on Avenida do Estado. I was on my way to Santo André, which is next to São Caetano. And I saw something that made me open the window and do something. There was a man holding a rock that was pretty large behind his back. Of course, he was going to throw it against the car. Could have even been ours. He was not well. So then, how do you keep a rock like that in hiding? And the light turned red. The cars had to stop there. I felt something in my heart and I called him saying, My friend! He looked at me. Are you all right? Yeah, yeah, I'm all right. I'm all right. Then he threw the rock away. <laughs> I didn't know him. I'd never seen him. But through that attitude, I stopped him from attacking someone. It's not that hard, my brother. You let the Lord God use you. And he touches people. I mean, I don't know. It could have been with us or with someone else. It could have even killed someone. When a strong young man throws a rock like that within a radius of about 10 meters, it could have caused a lot of harm. And if nothing else, some material loss. But if God's touched you, say it. It won't hurt. Let me tell you. Let me give you a word. The Holy Scriptures tells us this and that. But what does that mean? I don't know. God has touched my heart and the message was for you. And the person goes, and this can change a life. The Pharisees are not very fond of this. And lawyers, uh, they're not fond of this either. Rejected the will of God. Don't reject it. The Lord is very busy. The Lord God has the entire universe to take care of. The Lord God has all of the animals to feed. The Lord has to feed the microscopic life forms. He has the plants, the weather. He has to take care of everything. And there's also the people. He knows every single thing that the seven billion plus people that inhabit the earth are thinking right now. There is nothing that is uh, um, out of the Lord's reach. And he feeds people. He protects them. Even in places where the gospel is not being preached, people need to live, they need to eat, they need nourishment, the weather must be favorable, the far harvest needs to be plentiful. Otherwise, they're going to perish. And then one day we are going to preach there. So the Lord God is taking care of all that. And he still looks at you and me and gives us counsel. And he gives us direction. He gives us a message. And we say, no, I don't need that. Thanks a lot. I don't want it. Don't do that. Always. Always listen to everything, hold on to what's good, and whatever's not relevant, throw it away. But whatever it is, it is relevant, hold on to it. And in the following verse, Jesus said this, and the Lord said, To what then shall I liken the men of this generation? And what are they like? Mm, he goes on to say, they are like children, even the experts in the law. The Pharisees, the choir boys, Jesus said they are like children, sitting in the marketplace and calling to one another, saying, We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We mourned to you, and you did not weep. For John the Baptist came neither eating bread nor drinking wine. And you say, He was a demon. 
The Son of Man has come eating and drinking, and you say, Look, a glutton and a wine bitter, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. But wisdom is justified by all her children. When you take hold of what God's given you, that was worth it, according to God. You have helped someone, therefore the Lord was glorified through that. Bow your heads and close your eyes. Father, may we never, ever miss the counsel of the Lord. Father, give us a second chance. Lift people up. Now I'm going to use the authority you have given me in order to bless these lives. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I neutralize every work of the enemy in your life, in your body, in your soul, in your spirit, in your financial life, in your family, in your marriage, in this loneliness you're experiencing. And I say, devil, take everything that belongs to you and come out. I'm demanding it in the name of Jesus. You who don't, you don't allow this person, you don't allow them to take pleasure in the things of God. Come out and never oppress this person again. They've been delivered. Father, I rebuke every pain, physical pain, emotional pain. I rebuke sadness and all the problems that have been harassing these people. And I declare, be then delivered and blessed. Receive your deliverance in the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord, and amen. Now let's uh, roll the real life drama, will you? Maria José spends five years suffering from severe depression as well as panic disorder. There was a spirit of death that would talk to me, always in my ears, round the clock. That voice kept saying that I had to die. I could either die or remain like that forever. She was under heavy oppression. The enemy was working overtime in her mind. The enemy used to control her mind. And the devil would show me my coffin. He'd say that I would look very pretty and he would make me see myself in the, the coffin and the people carrying me. She wasn't in charge of her own mind. She would always say, I want to do my chores, but I can't, even poison. Sometimes she had poison in her hands, rat poison, intending to take it. I ended up at the hospital nearby a psychiatric hospital called San Francisco de Assis, and there they began to give me medication like antidepressants, panic disorder medication, prescription only, sleeping pills. Then I was discharged and I went home, but I remained very sick and my condition had not improved. And later I had to be hospitalized again and that was like a hard battle. I was hospitalized five times, I'd come and go. We moved out of Brasilia and went to Rio de Janeiro. Uh, looking for treatment with psychologists, with psychiatrists, paying for private doctor visits, and nothing seems to work. Do you know what it means for a person to spend the whole 24 hours standing and crying? She would wake up and she would be already crying under that, under that spirit and that fear. And there was a time when I started to lose my, my hand-eye coordination because I would start trembling. I wasn't able to do anything. I had to become the housemaker, the head of the household, I take care of the kids, I do laundry, cook, and iron clothes. And the enemy was aware that, that I didn't have, have a wife, you know, at the time I didn't have a wife. So he started to tempt me. He would bring me lots of women, women tempting themselves to me, because his intentions were what? He wanted to take me away from the presence of God. Then I did not want to go to church anymore, I didn't want to pray anymore, I didn't want to read the Bible anymore, and my husband would say to me, darling, you have to go to church because that is where you're going to be delivered. Then he would force me and he would take me and I would cry as I went because I cried around the I would block. bring her crying to church. That was when we started a spiritual battle. We began seeking God. We began seeking his help. And in the meantime, I had always been faithful in my tithes and offerings. And I felt the call to sponsor the work of the Lord. God honored Arnaldo's faith and Maria José experienced the miracle of deliverance. And that's when I started to feel better. My fears, they 
began began to go away and that was how my my deliverance god was starting to work and he was doing things his way every day i was being gradually delivered through the prayers and today she's able to do her chores she takes pleasure in accomplishing her chores when it's time to go to church she's so happy because she's going to god's house nowadays thanks be to god i no longer feel those those things that i used to feel I don't feel any more fear. Nowadays I I don't don't tremble anymore. I do all of my chores normally. I I started living again. I started taking pleasure in in taking care of myself, especially in serving the Lord. Jesus got rid of all those things. I'm standing fast in Jesus. So then I I know that God has worked through my sponsorship and through my faithfulness to him and through my faithfulness to his work. Dear friends, this man was a real man. He was a true missionary. He could have done other things, could have left could have left abandoning her affairs because he did not even have a wife. No, I belong to God. I'll get her back. He is going to receive a crown from Jesus. Jesus is going to reward him. Fight. Don't abandon. You were created to do the will of God. Don't reject the counsel of God, but justify the Lord. The lawyers and the Pharisees didn't uh, accept the counsel. They rejected it. Don't reject it. If necessary, Arnaldo, congratulations. May the Lord honor you more and more. Stand fast. The battle's not over yet. But one day you will get there. You'll have the run the race. You'll have kept the faith and you'll receive from God the crown of life. This is very important, folks. When many people for much less than that would have already made a different decision, he stood firm there. It's a person who needs to be sustained, to be kept, to be lifted up, and to be blessed. And God wants to do this in your life. God doesn't want you to reject his counsel. Dear friends, let us stand now because I want to pray with you and you who are at home as well. First, I'll pray for you who are at home and everyone can pray with me and then we'll continue the prayer. Believe this, God wants to work in your life. That which you saw there may happen again now. Father, we are now going into your most holy presence in the name of Jesus. Today you spoke about an awesome work, an unusual act, which is peculiar to you. Father, we don't understand how this is going to happen in our favor, but we need to justify you. We cannot despise your counsel. On the contrary, Father, we need to take a stand on your word. Take hold of all that belongs to us, and that's what we are doing now. I pray for everyone who is asking for your blessing, wherever they are. Some might even be in the hospital bed, Father, at a residential treatment center. I unite my faith to this person's faith, and I say to every demon, come out, go away, in the name of Jesus.